In the last video, I talked about how you can use for loops to create code that runs multiple times in a row. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use while loops to do the exact same thing. So let's just go back and create a normal for loop. We'll say for let i equal zero, and then we're gonna say while i is less than five, we're gonna add one to i each time, and we're just gonna print out i. So console.log i. So as you can see, we get zero, one, two, three, four being printed out. This is a standard for loop. Now in order to convert this to a while loop, all we need to do is come down here, write out the word while, all lowercase again, and just put some parentheses. This is where we're going to define our while loop. And then we're going to have curly braces just like we would for a for loop. And we can just take the code from up here and paste it in. This curly brace section is exactly the same between a for loop and a while loop. It's just the thing that you run each iteration. And now the difference between a while loop and a for loop is that a while loop only has one thing that goes in the parentheses, and that is the condition. Essentially, that's true false. If this is true, then the loop is going to run. If this is false, then the loop is going to exit. So if you were to say while true, this is going to give you an infinite loop that's never ever going to exit. While if you had, for example, here while false, this loop's never even going to run because it's just going to say false and skip over the entire loop. So what we would need to do if we want to replicate this for loop up here is we would need to have i less than five inside of here. This is our true false condition. Then we need to define our variable. But with a while loop, we don't do that inside of these parentheses here. We would actually just do that outside these parentheses. So we would just create a variable called i up here. And then we would say while i is less than five, we run this code. But we're currently not actually doing anything to i. What we need to do is take this third section at the end of our while loop and say, each time we go through our loop, add one to i. Now, if I remove the code up here, save, you can see we get the exact same result, zero, one, two, three, four because we start out with zero, while i is less than five, we're going to log out i and then add one to i each and every single time. Now this is really not that useful because it would be much easier to write this as a for loop because it's all condensed into one location as opposed to writing this as a while loop. But one instance where while loops are really useful is when you don't know how many times you need to loop. It's not immediately obvious how many times this loop needs to run. And an instance where that is really common is if you have some form of nested objects. So let's just say here we have a person and we're just going to come in here. We're going to give them a name. We're just going to say Kyle. And then we're going to give them, for example, let's just say a friend. And this friend is going to be another person. So it's going to have a name, which in our case, we'll just say Joe. And we're going to come down here and give that person a friend. Oops, friend. And this person is going to have another friend. We're going to call them Sally. And then this Sally is not going to have any friends. So what we want to do is we want to get the final friend. So we want to loop through, get this friend, get this friend's friend, and get all the way down till we get the final friend. Essentially, we want to go through all of the different friends of this person. So to do that, it's really easy with a while loop. What we can say here is while current person, which is a variable we're going to create, dot friend is not equal to null. Essentially, while we have a friend run this code. And we can just take current person and we can set that equal to our person, just like this. So our first person is going to be our person here. That's what our first current person is gonna be. And then inside of our code, all we're gonna do is log out the current person's name. And what we're going to do is we're gonna change the current person to be equal to the current person's friend. So we're just going down this chain. So we're starting with person, printing out their name. Then we're setting the new person, new current person equal to the friend of the person that we're currently on, which is this person here. And then we're printing out their name, getting their friend, printing out their name, and so on, all the way until we have no more friends. And this is something that you can't really do very well with a for loop because we don't know how many friends this person has. This could be, you know, one level deep, this could be a hundred levels deep. It's not really obvious to know how deep this actually goes. So a while loop is a perfect scenario for this. And if we save, you can see it prints out Kyle, and then it prints out Joe. But you'll notice it's not actually printing out the Sally, this last friend. And that's because we're checking to see if the person has any friends. Here, if we just check to see if the current person is not equal to null, that'll actually print out Kyle, Joe, and Sally. Because what's happening is the first iteration current person is equal to this whole person object, essentially Kyle. And then we're printing out Kyle, and we're now saying that the new current person is equal to the friend of the person that we're currently on. So the friend of Kyle is Joe. So we print out Joe, and we set the new current person equal to the friend of Joe, which is Sally. Then we print out Sally, set the new current person to the friend of Sally, but Sally doesn't actually have a friend, so current person is now equal to null, so this returns false, and we exit out of our while loop. 
That's really all a while loop is doing. Just like with for loops, we can use break and continue inside of here. So we can say if current person.name is equal to Joe, then we're just going to break. And now you'll see it's going to print out Kyle. And since the next person's name is Joe, it exits out of the entire while loop by using this break. We could also use continue here, for example. But that's actually going to give us an infinite loop because we're never actually updating the current person. So the current person is always going to stay Joe and it's always going to continue. So in our case, continue is not going to work here, but you could use it theoretically inside of a while loop. And now you're probably asking yourself, why would you ever use while loops over for loops? And this example is pretty much the only type of scenario where you'd want to use a while loop over a for loop where you don't know how many times you're going to be looping. It's not obvious how your loop is going to work out because it could be infinitely nested down to thousands of layers deep, or it could just be, you know, one friend, for example. Generally, though, this is a scenario you don't run into very often. So I recommend generally using for loops over while loops if you can. But if you're in a scenario where you can't really easily make a for loop work, then a while loop may be the solution for you. But they're not something that you use or see very often. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about another way to loop through things, and that's with using functions and recursion, which is quite a bit more confusing than the loops we talked about so far. So I can't wait to see you in that next video so I can clear up that confusion for you.